Thank you. Uh, an honor to be here. Also, uh, I guess there's a reason to, to mourn as well. Just uh, two weeks ago, we marked six months of Israel's stepped-up genocidal assault. And it, it's important to remember that this is only a stepped-up genocidal assault because genocide is a process. It's been going on in the case of the Palestinians for 75 years. This is just an escalation of the process. For Palestinians, this has been one of the most torturous times in many decades of brutalization by Israel. Not only Palestinians, but people worldwide are appalled and sickened by Israel's genocidal orgy. Here, over 10,000 kilometers from Gaza, we live in constant distress caused by daily reports of new atrocities. At last week's rally, our brother remarked that he and his partner's son, and I see him down here somewhere, I think, was just one year old last October. And so that means that with six added months of a genocidal assault, he has lived under the shadow of genocide for one-third of his life. So yes, six months is a time to mourn. It's also a time to reflect. And we have to temper our sorrow with an assessment of what we have achieved in that time. A few weeks ago, I had an extraordinary experience, honestly. I was walking through Hillside Mall. It was a warm day, a little warmer than today. I was wearing my kafia, my, sh my, my uh, sort of jacket was open a little bit. And, um, and so I was walking along, you could see my kafia. A car stopped in front of me with an elderly man and, and a woman in it, in the front seat, who I took to be his wife. And he stopped in front of me. And, you know, I wasn't, no, I didn't know what exactly to expect. He rolled down the window. And, you know, I, I didn't know him. So I was maybe a little bit uh, sort of uh, uncertain about what, uh, what kind of reception I would get. And he looked me in the face and he said, Free, free Palestine. And I just beamed and said, free, free, free Palestine. All three of us just in this one glorious moment. Now, I've been active on the issue of supporting Palestinians for quite a few years. I've been part of many meetings, rallies, pickets, demonstrations. Based on that experience, I can say this without fear of contradiction. Six months ago, that man and his wife would not have stopped a total stranger to declare free, free Palestine. Now, what does their expression of courage and solidarity spring from? Most importantly, it springs from, it stems from Palestinians' resilience and their resistance, their steadfastness. But we would be wrong to recognize that their act, to, to, to recognize, not to recognize, sorry, that their act in that parking lot also reflects mass support worldwide for Palestinians' resistance. And no less important, their declaration was inspired by you. Yes, you. You have given that elderly man and woman a voice, a new vocabulary, a boost in courage, that is unprecedented. After six months, it's clear that Palestinian resistance has prevailed against one of the world's most heavily armed and immoral armies. 
Now the people of Gaza have paid an unimaginable price, but they are undaunted. Israel's goal of er eradicating resistance has failed. Yes, celebrate that, yes. No less important, and this was mentioned earlier, Israel in the entire Zionist project has been discredited internationally. People here in one of the world's most subservient states to Israel openly express horror at Israel's wanton inhumanity. So yes, six months is a long time, too long, but we have won victories in that time. We have defeated every effort to suppress our right to stand publicly against genocide. Zionists have appealed to police to shut down our rallies and, and marches. Zionists have used their influence. Yes, they have influence, but it has not worked. They have used their influence in the corporate media, media to call for a shutdown of our rallies without success. Two or three months ago, Zionist, prominent Zionists met with the chief of, of the Vic PD and came away publicly declaring that they thought that they would see soon a suppression of these marches and rallies. They have failed. We are still here. Now, what else have we achieved in the, the, in the past six months? We have forced the resignation of a provincial cabinet minister. And she was no small fry. She was Zionism's representative right inside the BC cabinet behind us. What she did and said before six months ago would have passed easily. It would not have caused a furor, it would not have been controversial. And so in forcing her to resign, we have woken up the people who live behind us, who stay behind us, and don't think that they don't know that. What we have done is stepped up, initiated a, a, a new round of democratic struggle right here in our own home. This is significant. It is groundbreaking. The significant thing about the resignation of Selena Robinson as well was the way that it was accomplished. We didn't do it through backroom meetings. Those are Zionist methods. They have power, financial and political power, and we have little. But we prevailed through public statements, petitions, letters to politicians and the media, through our public statements. And what that did was to show that people have power and can exercise it. And that lesson cannot be lost. We must remind the people behind us again and again of that fact. So what we've done with the help of Palestinian resistance is to step up the pace and, and the very nature of democracy here. Also, we have forged new alliances with people. And I ask you to look around. Ask yourself, six months ago, did I know these people? Most of you, and, and as I mentioned, I've been on this, this, the, the, working on this issue for some time. Most of you I would not have recognized six months ago. So we have made new connections, forged new links. We have revived 
old organizations and given them a new lease of life on this issue. And we have created new organizations as well. And one of them, I want to tell you about, if I, if I may, Faculty for Palestine at UVic, our inaugural meeting is Tuesday at UVic. We're breaking ground there with a Palestinian speaker. So if you want to know more about it, come and ask me. In other words, what we've done is we have made momentous changes in, in six months. It has come at a huge cost. There's much less to do. We see politicians here, and not just the Trudeaus and the Conservatives, but also even NDP, so-called progressives, like Olivia Chow, the mayor of Toronto, basically coming to support of the, of the police who are attacking demonstrations, uh, pro-Palestinian demonstrations in Toronto. So there's much yet to do. But we are up to it. We are able to prevail. We have showed that in the past. We have got resistance and we've got the support of the people of Palestine and we are supporting them in turn. This is international solidarity. Every act that we take matters. We should never forget that. Even if that act is as small as rolling down your window and saying to a perfect stranger, free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free, free Palestine! Free, free, free Palestine! Free, free, free Palestine!